Welcome back to the Highlight Spiel. We're back with our Week 4 College Football Preview, previewing all the action upcoming in Week 4 of the College Football Season. Uh, to start it off, let's take a look at the new AP Top 25. Here's the new rankings. And uh, after having a look at that, you know, a uh, few changes there. Clemson up to number two. Uh, LSU stays in barely at number 25. Florida moved up to number 20. San Diego State debuting at number 22. Uh, Virginia Tech, your boys, all the way up to 13th there. Yes, and uh, Tennessee dropped out after the loss to Florida in a tight game. And uh, West Virginia still on rank. Still on rank sitting at 26th. Uh, you know, Big 12 play opens this week for the Mountaineers to play in Kansas. Hopefully a win this week might get them in there. Personally, I think they should be ranked 25th instead of LSU. You know, LSU's uh, lost last week to an unranked team by 30. West Virginia's only lost to now the number 13 in the team in the country, Virginia Tech, you know, at the very last second, you know, came down to the last play. But, you know, whatever. Things will play themselves out. Other than that, I pretty much agree with the rankings. I like Clemson at two. I think you can make an argument right now for Clemson at one. Mm -hmm. They played uh, two big games, Auburn and um, Louisville. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alabama's really only played Florida State up to this point. Um, you know, never know what can happen. They start conference play this week, taking on Vanderbilt. And uh, but other than, other than that, I, I pretty much agree with the, the way the rankings look, and uh, I, I think that uh, it's going to be a good week for ranked teams. For ranked teams, yeah. It's uh, well, if you're looking at on paper, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of chalk picks this week. Going to mm -hmm. go with chalk, I think. Both of us are a lot. Uh, not many ranked teams should lose this week. Maybe just a couple in the big games of the week, but we'll see how it goes. With that being said. With no further ado, let's get into the weekly pick 'em. Uh, before we get into it, let's take a look at the standings uh, following week three one more time. Man, those are pretty. You can see we both had a little. Uh, Rough patch last week with AG Chaos and upset striking, but I'm still holding a nice little six-game lead over my friend here and uh, ready to get it going this week in the weekly pick -em. Let's get it going. Number one, Alabama. Going on the road, as we talked about, opening conference play, taking on Vanderbilt. Who do you like? Vanderbilt pulled a shocker last week on a ranked team, Kansas State. Can they do it again? Roll time, baby. Alabama. I'm taking them as well. Vanderbilt, you know, might be a tight game, but uh, I think, you know, they're going to get more than people expect, but uh, Alabama's going to cut pull away in the end. Tide rolls. Then Boston College coming in to take on number two, Clemson. Ain't good them Tigers back. They done met him up two weeks in a row. <laughs> he's not, he's, not, he's not going to get some no more, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tigers easily in this one. I like Clemson as well. Number three, Oklahoma. Starting off Big 12 play. Conference play themselves. Going on the road to take on a really struggling Baylor squad this season. You like Oklahoma by a lot here? Going my son up, baby. Yeah, Oklahoma runs away with this one easily, I think, on the road at Baylor. I like the Sanders, too. Number four, Penn State, in the Big Ten game, going on the road. Take it on Iowa. Tough defense there at Iowa. Josie Jewell, maybe the best defense in the conference. It's definitely up there. You think they're going to give Penn State a tough test on the road? Uh, too much for Penn State to overcome it. I think so, too. Uh, Iowa's defense is tough, but uh, if they slow down Barkley, McSorley can hurt you and vice versa. So I like Penn State as well. Number five, USC, going on the road as well this week, taking on Cal. Uh, I wouldn't really call that too much of a road game. They're both in California, so I'm, sure. I'm going to go with uh, USC. Yeah, I like the Trojans here. Sam Darnold, Ronald Jones, uh, top five team, looking, they're looking impressive so far this season, and I think they get it done. Number seven, Washington, also going on the road, taking on Colorado in a Pac-12 matchup. Mm. Wow. I'm going to pick Colorado, but I'm going to go with Washington. You never know. Colorado's pulled shockers in Boulder before. Mm -hmm. But they won't do it this time. Jake Browning and the Huskies easily. Number eight, Michigan. Going on the road. Taking on Purdue. Uh, Wolverines. Wolverines. I like the Wolverines here, too. Too much for Purdue to handle. Mm -hmm. UNLV comes into Columbus to take on number 10 in the country, Ohio State. Who do you like? 
Uh, let me go with the Buckeyes, man. Yeah, they're just uh, too much over my heart. I think so, too. Uh, UNLV upset by Howard <coughs> earlier in the year, and Ohio State's definitely no Howard. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio State runs away with this one. NC State going on the road to take on Florida State. Uh, Florida State, I think they're going to pull it off. Yeah, Florida State, too. Uh, James Blackman's getting settled in as quarterback now, you know, uh, improving, e e improving each week, and I think there'll be too much for NC State to handle. But closer than the experts say, Florida State in a close one. Your boys we talked about a little bit earlier, number 13, Virginia Tech, at home, taking on Old Dominion. BC, baby. Yeah, Hokies win this one going away. Toledo, taking on number 14, Miami. Who do you like in this one? Do you? I know how to put a few sign on wood. <laughs> yeah, definitely the Hurricanes. Number 15, Auburn, on the road in the SEC matchup, going on to take on Missouri. Auburn. Yeah, I like the Tigers as well. Uh, kind of struggled on offense more than you know they have in the past, and people are kind of wondering what's going on there. Uh, their backup quarterback Sean White just missed this week after an arrest, uh, so hopefully you know Stidham can stay healthy and be big for them there. But I think they handle Missouri pretty easily. I like Auburn. Nevada going on the road to take on number 18 in the country, Washington State, and Mike Leach. I'm going to go with Washington State. I got to go with Leach and his guys too. Washington State's looking tough this season. They get it done. Louisville looking to bounce back after the loss to Clemson. Now sitting at number 19 in the country, taking on Kent State at home. Uh, Lamar Jackson going to have a hell of a show. Yeah, they're going to take out uh, some of that anger on Kent State, I'm mm -hmm. afraid. And, uh, you see what ugly. Clemson did to him. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, Louisville wins this one easily, a laugher. And then uh, number, 20 in the, number 20 in the country now, Florida, going on the road to take on Kentucky in an SEC conference matchup. Who do you got in this one? Oh, that might be a close one, but I'm going to go with Florida. They're still on their high horse from last week's win. I think so, too. I think this one possibly has upset potential, maybe a trap game, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. could be. But I think you're right. Florida's riding high, and I think that that win gives them some momentum going forward in the season. and They can have a better season than some people expect, possibly. Mm -hmm. I like Florida here. Then uh, number 22 in the country, San Diego State. We talked about them jumping into the polls. And right off the bat, they got to go on the road and take on Air Force. Do you like them again? Yeah, I like them. Uh, they, how they did Stanford last week, I think they won't have no problem with Air Force. I, I agree with that as well. That, that rush attack solid. Rashawn Penny looks like one of the best running backs in the country, and I think they get it done on the road. I like San Diego State. Because they also won on the road at Stanford, too. So I mean, Exactly. They can definitely get yeah. it done in Air Force yeah. easily, I think. I like San Diego State. Looking like a tough team to beat this season. On the up and coming. Yes, sir. Then number 24, Oregon, going on the road to take on Arizona State. I'm going to go with the Ducks. The yeah. Tigers got them playing nice. Yeah, Willie Taggart's doing a good job there. and I like Willie Taggart a lot as a coach, and I think he's going to get Oregon back to, you know, maybe that level they was at before. I'm going Ducks, too. And then uh, LSU coming off the huge loss to Mississippi State, 30-point loss. They're back at home this week taking on ACC squad in Syracuse. Who do you like in this one? I think LSU might pull it out just by maybe a little bit. I don't know by a lot, but I'm going to go LSU. Not a bad pick. Um, being at home, I'm going to go with the Tigers as well. I think if this was at Syracuse, it may be a different mm -hmm. story. Dino Babers runs a good offense, and I think they're going to score on LSU. I think this is going to be a really close matchup, but I think the Tigers get it done in the end. And then our big games of the week. <laughs> Number 17, Mississippi State, goes on the road after that huge win against LSU, taking on number 11, Georgia. Two undefeated teams, SEC conference matchup. Who wins? It's a tough one. It's on the road. They did just miss, I mean, manhandle LSU. And Georgia, probably a little weaker team than LSU. Um, so Mississippi State again. They're still on a high horse thing. I like the pick, uh, I'm a big fan of Mississippi State. Uh, Dan Mullen's done a great job with that program. Nick Fitzgerald, you know, a guy a lot people in the country may not have heard of yet, but they will by the end of the season. He'll be a household name. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the country, and if you haven't got a chance to watch him play, I suggest you do. And I think Mississippi State gets it done as well, and I like them a lot in the SEC this season. Watch out for Mississippi State. And then our other big game, uh, Big 12 matchup, number 16 TCU going on the road to take on number 6 Oklahoma State. Uh, big matchup, another – you know, two undefeated teams yet again. Who do you like in this one? Well, I'm going to go Oklahoma State. Too much Mason Rudolph. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that that's a solid pick. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Mason Rudolph, James Washington, Justice Hill, those guys, they get it done. And uh, 
TCU's defense looks great under Gary Patterson, mm-hmm. known for having great defenses in that 4-2-5. Uh, Kenny Hill and that offense has potential. If they can come along, they can be a real dangerous team, but I just don't think they'll be able to score with Mason Rudolph and that Oklahoma State offense just yet. I'm going with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. All right, now let's get into the segments here. Uh, let's talk about upset alert. Who are you putting on upset alert this week in week four? Uh, uh, I'm going to go with uh, LSU. Uh like they only scored seven points against Mississippi State coming off a big, big loss. Syracuse is a team that can score points. Yeah, and so hopefully they can, you know, uh, bounce back and keep the upset off of them. And yeah, we both win LSU there, but I think that that's a good upset alert pick. I think Syracuse has a potential to upset them definitely, and LSU kind of reeling right now maybe. We'll see. Um, as for me, I'm going to have to go ahead and put number 11 Georgia on upset alert this week in week four. You know, like I said, I was talking about earlier, Mississippi State, they really impressed me this season. This season, they're currently outscoring their opponents 143-28, to which is impressive. They're also currently the top defense in the SEC, which, you know, has a lot of good defenses traditionally. And then Nick Fitzgerald, I talked about him a little bit and how impressive he's been. You know, 543 passing yards and seven touchdowns, and then 240 rushing yards and five touchdowns. 12 total touchdowns, getting it done both on the air and on the ground. He's really looked good, and Mississippi State's, you know, they got a great chance, I think. You know, mm-hmm. Georgia's at home, but uh, there's no Jacob Eason. Uh, Jake Fromm's getting his third start there. He's a true freshman. It's start, only his third career start, and it's against a tough team in Mississippi State. And I think Georgia's definitely on upset alert. I picked Mississippi State, and I think they'll get it done. Let's talk about X Factor of the Week. Who do you have as your X Factor of the Week in Week 4? I'm going with a whole LSU offense and defense. Can their defense bounce back after allowing 37 points? Uh, we'll see. Can their offense bounce back after only scoring 7? We're going to see. Yeah, the whole team needs to be an X yeah. Factor this week, you know. They don't need to get that two loss in a row and really start running. Unravel. Yeah, unraveling. If they lose the circus, they are really unravel. <clears throat> Yeah, there'll be pandemonium there. Mm-hmm. Won't be a good, good sight. They'll want less miles back. <laughs> Definitely. They'll, they'll think they made a mistake there. Who you got? Um, as for me, I'm going to have to go with uh, Kenny Hill and the TCU, the whole TCU offense. You know, Kenny Hill's a guy when he's at Texas A&M and his debut came out 500-some yards, most yards ever in a debut. Uh, Kenny Trill Hill. And then, you know, kind of fell, fell off there, ended up transferring and resurfaced here at TCU. Struggled last season. This season early on has you know, looked a little bit better, but still has struggled somewhat, and the TCU defense has been carrying that team, and the offense needs to come along really quick in a hurry. And if TCU is going to have a chance against Oklahoma State, Kenny Hill in that offense is definitely the X factor because they're going to have to put up a lot of points to compete with Oklahoma State's attack. Mm-hmm. And then let's talk about boosting the Heisman campaign. Who's your uh, Heisman campaign boosting candidate this week in Week 4? But Baker Mayfield, he plays against a terrible Baylor defense, so he should be able to put up a. Uh, uh, he should be able to put up big numbers. That, that's going to boost his campaign. Right, stats, you know, style points. That's what it's all about. That's what impresses the voters in the polls and in the Heisman polls. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, big game, of course, would do him a lot. Well, he's right at the top right now. If he wants to stay there, he wants to sh- he needs to put up a lot of big numbers against the weak squad for sure. Mm-hmm. Who you got? Um, as for me, I'm gonna go stay in the Big Twelve. Mason Rudolph. Um, he's looked amazing this season, put up big numbers, you know, 400, 500-yard games. Um, if he can do that against a top-20 team in TCU, arguably a top-15 team, and one of the better defenses traditionally in the Big 12 and, and a great defensive mind in Gary Patterson, if, you know, if he can come out and put up three, 350, you know, three, four touchdowns and they get an easy win against TCU, I think that really moves him up in that, in that Heisman race. I think I had him at second or third this, uh, this past week, and I think he can get up there right, you know, if he's not at second, you know, he's – him and, him and Baker Mayfield may end up being, you know, 1A and 1B to me, really. Because I think right now Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are 1A and 1B in that Big 12 conference. But with a big game against, uh, in a huge matchup in one of the, our big games of the week against TCU, if Mason Rudolph can get it done and put up some stats, it'll boost his Heisman campaign. All right, and that'll wrap us up here for the Week 4 preview. Uh, join us after the games this weekend. Next week we'll be back to recap it all on the Week 4 recap show. This has been the Highlight Spiel brought to you by Trio 4 Productions. I'm Jordan. I'm Flip. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you.